All right, welcome to Module 2 of OA170. This week we are going to get into Excel, which either thrills you because you've had some experience with Excel or fills you with dread because you have had a little bit of exposure to Excel and it was confusing, you didn't really like it that much. Either way, we're going to jump into this. This might be a little bit longer presentation. I might need to do two of them. If so, then hang with me. So, uh, we're going to Module 2 Assignment, same MO, we have something you need to download, an Excel sheet, and you're going to be going to the book this time, turn to Excel page 127, and find the independent challenge number four, starts about halfway down the page. Okay, you're going to be using the following formula, sum if, average if, etc. Now, there's something very, very important, and why I'll say it now, is when you submit a an Excel doc, Excel spreadsheet for this assignment. Make sure to submit the Excel spreadsheet. Do not change it to a PDF. Do not do anything else to it because the assignment actually gives you all of the answers. If you look on the page, Excel 127 has all of the answers that you need right there, clear as day, no problem. All you have to do is copy all that in and put your name in the footer. If that's what you turn in, if you turn in a PDF like that or a screenshot of it, you're not going to get any points for it because you can get that straight out of the book. We have to be able to click on your formulas and make sure that they're correct. All right, so submit the spreadsheet. We have to be able to see the formulas, otherwise there's nothing for us really to grade because we give you all the answers. All right, now if you click on this, it's going to pull up something similar to this. I have changed the information in here so that we can play around. I can show you some things without, again, giving you all of the answers to this assignment. But we'll show you how to do this stuff. Now, when it comes to Excel, how you should think about Excel is as a very, very bright per, uh, math student, all right, who's something like Rain Man. Have you ever seen that movie where he's very, very bright with numbers, but a little bit challenged when it comes to regular activities? Excel is brilliant when it comes to analysis, but you have to be able to tell it what to do in exactly the right way. Otherwise, it gives you error messages saying, I don't understand. Okay, but that's what it does. It does what you tell it to do. All right. Now, most people, when they're using Excel, they use it something like this. They make a big list because it's easy with all these different little cells. Well, that is the first step. You put in some information. But Excel can do a lot more than that, as most of you already know, um, because you can tell it to do things. Something as simple as saying, I would like to add that plus that. Just clicking with the mouse equals, hitting equals at the beginning right here tells Excel, I want you to do something for me, all right? Then you tell it what, that plus that. Hit enter, tells you 350, okay? Brilliant math student, you just have to tell it what to do. You could also say that plus that plus that times that divided by that. No problem, all right? You can also, moving it one step further, because I'm assuming most of you already know how to do this part, you can also take it a step further and speak to it in Excel language and tell it you want it to do something. So let's say that we want to add all of these. Either I could go through and hit that plus that plus that plus that all the way down, which would be tedious, especially since there's like a million rows in an Excel spreadsheet. Instead, we could tell it, I want you to add. We that by calling the sum function or sum formula. Uh, sum with an open parenthesis. This tells Excel I want you to do something now. And then we could just highlight all of these. Close parentheses, tell it we're done. Hit enter. All right. Now the sum function is just one of many, 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 many functions that you can use. Let me show you a shortcut. Right here, where it says insert function, click on it. See in this box, you got most recently used, you have all these, okay, good ones. What about if we looked at all of them? How long do we have? There's huge numbers of things that this program can do, most of which are too advanced for me to ever use, much less any of you to ever use. They're huge. We're going to look at a very, 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 very small percentage of these 
just to give you a taste of them. Because once you learn how to use formulas in Excel, you learn how to figure them out and how to use them, then fi finding an, a new one and you, figuring out how to use it is fairly simple. Okay, so there's the end of them. We've got huge numbers of them. Well, we're going to use a few of these. So, we used sum. Well, what if we didn't really remember how to use sum? Well, if you click on this after you put one in, it actually gives you some help. So, in the sum function, once you've decided on a function, it'll try to tell you. The sum function adds all the numbers in a range of cells. Number 1, number 1 to 1 to 255 numbers to sum. This one's fairly simple. They're all the same. Just add some more numbers in here. They don't, they don't care. All right, so... Let's look at some other functions we could use. What about average? I want to know the average number of all these. Well, I'm not quite sure how to use that, so let's look at it. Well, you just put in numbers. I could either type in numbers, and it'll give me an average, or I can point at some numbers for Excel and say, give me the average of those. Now, there's another point in here. Uh, let's say, well, the way Excel works is you can point at different cells. So, let's say right here, we're just going to put another sum function, open parentheses, and I'm going to say all of those. Close parentheses, hit enter. The way that Excel sees that what I just put in, and this is the confusing part for a lot of people, so pay attention to this, I'll try to do it as clearly as possible. What it sees is not... C4, which is, you know, C4, down to C15. What it sees, actually, is its relative position to this cell. What I really just told it to do is take the cell that, the range of cells that starts at 1, 2, 3, 4 cells over and 1 up, and copy everything from that cell down 11 cells to the 15. Why is that important? it works. Well, because I can take and drag this down if I wanted to continue to do that same formula, I can just copy it down. But watch right here, if I click up here, it'll show me what cells it's using. It moved down with me. This is helpful to know because in a minute we're going to put formulas in here and then just copy them down so that it works for every one of them. Okay, we're going to change up the criteria, but you could copy this down a thousand rows, a million rows, and have it still work if you put it in correctly. But you have to remember that if it's like this, it is a relative measure. Okay, it's looking at what it is relative to the position of this um, this cell right here. Now, the way to change that is when you're putting this in, you could hit F4. See how it makes those little dollar signs? There you go. Now, if I, if I copy this down, which I can do either by copying, copying and pasting, or I can put the, my cursor right down here by this bottom right corner, see how it turns into a black cross, and take that and drag it down. Now, if I click on this to see what it's using, it's exactly the same, and it always will be. I could take this down, it just fonts go 1,000 rows, 1,100. Still exactly the same. Okay, that's what I like to call an absolute reference. Okay, so you have the relative referencing and the absolute. I will show you here in a minute why that's important. Let me delete all these because if not, they're going to bug me. <laughs> that's funny. Okay, so that's going to be useful here in just a moment. When we get into these formulas. So otherwise, you mess everything up. So, for example, let's say that we wanted to, let's see, I'm going to stop actually right here uh, with this part of the presentation. I'm going to make another one where we actually talk about the formulas we're going to use. So in this presentation, we covered how to access formulas, talked about how many of those there are, how to enter a formula, which includes hitting the equals, putting in the name of the formula, open parentheses, satisfying whatever conditions it wants, and then close parentheses. And then we talked about relative and absolute referencing. Relative being here without any dollar signs. 
a absolute reference if you hit F4, or you can just manually put in two dollar signs, one in front of the letter, one in front of the number. It remains the same all the time. Okay, those will be very useful. But I'm going to stop right now, start a new presentation, and we'll go again and talk about those formulas. Thank you.